Welcome back to the first team. I'm Joe DeLeon and with me is my co-host NFL draft analyst Ryan Roberts and we've got a guest today another NFL draft analyst Connor Rogers from NBC Sports NFL draft with NBC Sports as well as the host of the NFL Stock Exchange podcast with PFF. Connor appreciate you taking the time hopefully your your summer has been as quiet as I think everybody's been hoping to have theirs be but how you doing appreciate you taking the time to join us. I'm good, guys. Thanks for having me. Summer's been fun. I, I'm at the point where I just despise the heat, though, so much where it's like I just feel like I can't go outside and do anything. And I know that sounds yeah. pathetic, but yeah. it's uh, I'm I'm ready for fall. And I don't I'm not one of those people that wishes away the vacation time. I'm really not. But I've officially this week hit the point of let's get football back on. Let's get <laughs> back to the 60 degree weather. I'm ready to roll. I mean, it's been an awful summer, man. I mean, I know we're regionally kind of similar. Like you're in Jersey yeah. for like 95 every single day for like five weeks, which has been absolutely terrible. But too long. Too it's long. A, it's unbearable. Yeah, I'm up in Westchester, New York now, and it's I mean, same weather as New Jersey. I you know go across the tap all the time, and it's just yeah, it's just you know, it's uh, there's not really much to do. Like jump in a pool. I don't. I don't know. Like it's just eventually it's <laughs> Stay just too, inside. Yeah, and I'm a night owl, <laughs> so I'm not one of those people that's like. Yeah, I'll make a 5:50 a.m. tea time to golf. Like I don't, I don't do that either. So it's, it's maybe it's just not agreeing with me. I'm the problem, maybe not the climate. Well, I think we just need fall to get here. Is kind of the uh, yeah. is, is the solution Let's that roll. needs to come. Well, Connor, I wanted to start the conversation now because this is a little bit more of a obviously a general conversation over summer scouting because we are. I mean, Joe, what do we have? Like two position groups left that we're kind of working through a little bit, two or three uh, somewhere in that ballpark. No, we've got quite a few, but we're, Ooh, we're you guys are ahead of us. Yeah. yeah. Well, Somewhat. I think we're right around the same spot. I think I don't I think you're thinking we're further along than we okay. actually are. All right. Maybe maybe we're not far along at all and we have a lot of work to do. I guess I don't no, know. No, we don't. But, but Connor, I know that you are now fresh in the summer scouting. By the way, congratulations on getting married, man. That's a, that's absolutely fantastic. I don't know if you saw that one, Joe, but uh, only one person did, in this yeah. podcast isn't married at this point, so Joe needs to figure wow, that out. Oh, shut up. I, I'm much younger than you, Ryan. Shut up. <laughs> en- engaged? Girlfriend? Nothing? No, uh, I have a girlfriend. I am not. Okay. I have no desire to get married anytime <laughs> soon. But, well, why? What the hell? We're here to talk ball. We're not here to talk about me getting uh, married. Let's let, let, that well, up. Well, um, all right. Let's talk. <laughs> 2025 yes. NFL draft, then we'll get back on a good trajectory here, Joe. Connor, 2025 NFL draft class. Let's qualify this one or quantify this as well as we can, just kind of overarching. Coming into this process, before I even started into summer scouting, there was a opinion out, it was already out in the universe. This is a bad class, weak at the top. The, you know, there are several positions that are down. Quarterback looks a mess. And an overall perspective here so far. How do you like the 2025 class? So I did all the offense and I'm working through D line right now. And I got to say the D line's giving it a nice shot in the arm. Like I'm really liking this interior D line group that I've been watching. And I I have pretty big expectations for corner and edge as well. And safety. It actually from afar, looks like we have some big safeties as well. I once again, I haven't gotten there. I don't, I'm not ready to call this a bad class. I think that is now you're right, Ryan. It's how do we defy it and define it, right? It's I don't like this quarterback class. Let me just blatantly say it. I didn't have a first round grade on a single quarterback through summer scouting. And I think that why people might look at it as a weaker class as a whole is because I think some of the strengths of this class are at non premium positions. People love to say, I think this running back class is stupid good. I thought the guard class was excellent. I, I loved watching this interior offensive line class, specifically guard more than center. Um, there's definitely some tackles that have some big time ability, which offensive line and tackle is a premium position. I think the top of this wide receiver class has a lot of talent as it usually does tight end. Okay. It's, it feels like it, it might be Colston Loveland. And then we're getting into the territory of a lot of guys, but I think people grab onto that because of the lack of hype around a quarterback this time last year, we were all sitting there like Drake may Caleb Williams, You know, I liked Michael Penix a lot. I really, really did. And then out of nowhere came the rise of Jaden Daniels. J.J. McCarthy had a big year to rise up. Obviously, Bo Nix repeated what he had done the year before, and he went in the first round. So I think that's where it's at right now. I think the blue chip talent might be on the D line as well, and I know we'll Mm -hmm. get there for corner. So, yeah, it's it's a I would call it an average draft class. Maybe that's a cop out for summer scouting right now, but I don't think it's bad by any stretch of the means. In the vein of the quarterbacks, I feel like, I, I keep getting asked about like who do I think is the best quarterback in the class, and the two that get brought up very often it, it's a lot of Shadur Sanders, it's a lot of Carson Beck. Quinn Ewers has been discussed in this, but 
it feels like more than ever, there's so much volatility. You mentioned how this last yeah. class, it was Caleb and it was Drake for a really long time. And then things kind of shook up a little bit with Jaden Daniels. But for the most part, we knew who the top guys were. It almost feels like this year, maybe there's like six or so guys that could be in that first round conversation. Where do you see the QB class and like who do you who are you projecting now on from your perspective is you know, maybe the top guy or some of the top guys? Right. So, I mean, I could just rip off how I stacked it. I had Carson Beck as the top guy, and then I had Ewers and Shadur next up where they were kind of stapled together at two and three. Connor Wigman was four for mm. me, and I think that's a big projection from Texas a because he got hurt last year. Then I had Cam Ward, who's just a – he's a wild man. Like, he's really mobile. He makes big throws. He turns the ball over a ton. He's got a really, really – like if you wanted Jaden Daniels kind of like get better against pressure, cut down the turnovers, like that's what you throw in front of Cam Ward. If you do all of those things, which is lofty, lofty, you know, improvements, then Cam Ward will enter a bigger conversation. Riley Leonard, Jackson Dart, Noah Fafita, Donovan Smith, uh, and Jalen Milrow. That was my top 10 mm. right there. And like I said, I didn't have a first round grade on any of them. The guy I feel the best of floor wise is Carson Beck. I think he's somebody that... He sees things well. He operates within the offense well. He's got size. He's not really an overly mobile, creative player. I think we saw that against the Al against Alabama's defense where he he probably needed to create more and he wasn't able to do that. Um, I thought the, the release is a little funky. He gets into a habit of being an upper body thrower at times, but he, he could throw the ball pretty effortlessly. I mean, it flies out of his hand. I, and when you get him in rhythm off play action, it looks really, really clean. You know, with Shadur, I know there's a there's it just feels like opinions are all over on him. And I don't know if that's the sports books making him the projected number one overall pick or what. I, I didn't see it that way. I, I looked at Shadur and I mean, I think he does a lot of good things mechanically. He really knows how to tie his lower half to his eyes when he's comfortable. The throwing motion's pretty snappy. Middle of the field looked good, um, you know, especially in that 10 to 19 yard range. I thought when they get guys working on crossers, he knows how to throw a catch and run ball. But I mean, the, the 49 sacks, whether you hate the offensive line or not, like this, a lot of it's him holding the ball, right? Like the yeah. offensive line can't block for 11 seconds in any conference. Um, I think that he's not somebody that I, I saw running away from front seven defenders in the power five very often. I, like it's I didn't see escapability like I saw some of these other guys. Like when you when you watch them all together, it paints a bigger picture for you. When you watch Cam Ward and Riley Leonard, they can run away from defenders it, with yeah. pretty you know, it's pretty easy for them. So I don't want to be too long winded here, but that, that's how I looked at the class where there's things I liked from yours and Shadur Sanders, but some flaws right now that would only have them going into the season as day two guys. And, you know, guys can always make a big jump, especially quarterback. There's a big curve where teams take round two guys in the first round all the time. But it's a, it's a group with a lot of unknown, like a lot of what ifs, right? Like Donovan Smith is a big play hunter. He's a big body guy that loves to push the ball down the field, but Sometimes pushing the ball down the field is like, I have to throw this. And it's like, no, you don't. So <laughs> it, it's hard. It's hard with guys like that because they could go have a season where they throw 35 touchdowns and four picks and then they're a first round pick. But we haven't really seen them do that on a consistent basis yet. And that's why they're young players. They're college players and drastic improvements do happen. But if I was a betting man, do I think somebody ends up going in the first round out of this quarterback class? I do. But does anyone deserve to go top five? I just haven't seen that yet. Yeah, well, that's very fair. And I, I love the note that you made about Shador because I had the same thing, Connor. I was talking to someone because I forget what site it was, but I was looking at like, and they just had general estimates of like 40 times and all that type of stuff. And they had like a 455 on Shador. And I'm like, there's no way. I do mm -hmm. not see yeah. anywhere no way. that. Because I remember no like I comped him on Twitter to Teddy Bridgewater. And I still like that comp because I think that he is. I like that. He's not a statue, but he's also not like this crazy athlete that's going to break the pocket laterally all the time like it's just not his game necessarily but he does have enough escapability when he processes correctly right yes. so i i like the notes there overall on shador I, one player i want to ask you about because this is the very interesting part about summer scouting because there is a leap of faith that has to happen with some guys at times and ultimately Grades are going to change, even though people are going to go yeah. back on Twitter and they're going to find the receipts, quote unquote. Things are going <laughs> to change a lot. Connor Weekman, nine career games, I think he's played something like that, like a crazy low number. How do yep. you weigh or outweigh the upside and the potential and the talent versus just such a small sample size as of right now? 
Yeah, and these are the guys you really got to pick your your places, right? You can't do this with six guys in a position group or else you're an absolute madman. You really got to pick your spots. And it's funny you talking about people finding the receipts and stuff. Like, what do they think NFL executives are doing right now? They think they're punching in first round grades on players. It's, no, grades change throughout the season. So uh, it, it's just funny. But anyways, with Wigman, he's got a big time arm. I mean, when you watch him challenge coverage, like whether it's outside the numbers or in the middle of the field, tight windows, it's it's there. I mean, he could do it. The The arm is very lively to me. I thought his run, he's fearless as a runner. He doesn't care. I mean, he he can really move and lower his shoulder and make big plays. When you watch all the third downs, and it's a small sample size last year, but you watch all his third downs, he is decisive and he is confident. And he knows exactly where he needs to go with the football, and he has the physical talent to get the football there. So that was a sample size to me where I go, if this is who he is, he, he could be a big-time player. But when you miss that much of the season – it's it's just hard to know, right? Like, we're just going off what we see. I mean, yeah, after his season ended after four starts due to a foot injury. He had thrown eight touchdowns, two picks at the time. He's a former four-star recruit, big baseball prospect coming out of Texas in high school. Like, this, this is an athlete where it was decision time. It wasn't, oh, I got to go play football now. It was, well, I guess I'll, I'll, I'm going to choose football, but probably could have probably could have been in a major league organization, in my opinion, if he kept going down that road. So, when you look at that kind of athletic background and what I've already seen on tape, if he could build on that through the course of a season, he's got every bit of first round tools. But man, that's you're right. That's a big projection. That is a big projection. Like, I, and I honestly sat on the fence with that one because I, I saw a first round ability and put up QB four because first round ability doesn't mean you're a first round player. You got to see it throughout the season. But you're, you're going to see a lot of different analysts have Wigman as a top the top quarterback or the second quarterback in this draft coming out of summer. Bet online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing. Bet online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code Believe. That's B L E A V for fifty percent off your first deposit that is a 50 percent welcome bonus bet online where the game starts one thing that feels really weird with this class is how i don't want to say it's like an elite running back class like that would be too hyperbolic but just how quality it how quality it is and how much depth there is there's gonna be a lot of guys on day two early day three it feels like that could be important contributors which just is a bit of an aberration we don't see stuff like this often at a position that is decreasing in value in the NFL. Is there like one guy that you really love? Maybe not somebody at the top, but just somebody in the in the middle of the pack that you think is a sleeper or just some player that you think can really, really uh, find a role in the NFL and stick for a long time. I think Kyle Manungai out of Rutgers is let's go. You know, can I curse on this podcast? Or <laughs> I'll just curse. Curse. go for it. I mean, he's, fu- he's fucking phenomenal. Like, and, <laughs> and I mean it in a way where if you just love this game and this sport, like you just love every bit of the way this guy's built and the way he plays like it's just mm. i mean listen i understand the 5.2 yards per carry it's not it doesn't jump off the screen like all these guys do but 73 missed tackles forced i mean 34 explosive runs he's a human pinball he and he, he just he clearly lives in the weight room you look at the body type yeah. it's, it's true weight room strength it's grown man nfl strength uh i think he's got sharp quick cuts he, he doesn't – what I love about Manungai, and this is something that a lot of college players have to grow into, he knows not to exaggerate his cuts so he doesn't lose speed. And I get it. He's probably not going to run a 4-3, right? But it's that play speed's different when you know how to maintain speed while still making guys miss. So not all missed tackles force are created the same. You can make a guy miss, but then you're tackled right away. But if you can make a guy miss and actually turn it into more yards, I think Manungai is really good at that. He's the king of, and I thought Trey Benson was really good at this. Mm. He's the king at, there's a nothing play. Okay, I got four yards. Yeah. Like, that, that changes drives. That keeps drives alive. Um, when you watch this dude in pass pro, forget it. I mean, knockout blows. Knockout blows in pass pro. I, I love the DNA. I get it. Like, let's just be real, right? He's So he's RB5 for me. He doesn't have the physical ability that a Judkins has and a Marion Hampton has and Ollie Gordon has. And I love Ashton Genty. I have him as RB2. 
and he's tremendous. But I feel like that's a chalk pick if I said, hey, guys, here's my deep sleeper, <laughs> Ashton Genty. Uh, and even Manungai is picking up a lot of steam. It, people are catching on. But Rutgers, you know, they don't have that profile of prospect that often. So I, I think he's great, man. He's he's really he's got it. I think he could play in the NFL today with the skill set he has. And maybe he's not you know, an all pro caliber player, but can he start at running back for you and play for a long time because of the pass game ability? I think so. I'm a, I'm a Manungai truther. Ryan's a hater. So I'm not glad that you agree with me. I knew on that him. you were a fan. I have a good grade I knew you were a fan, him. which is why I asked the yeah. question. I was hoping you were going to say Manungai. The, the tri-state yeah. bias in this podcast is just absurd. <laughs> relax. Absolutely absurd. Relax. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Yeah. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a Big Ten media next week, and he's one of the guys I get to sit. It's like one of those ones where you see the name on paper, and you just can't wait because it's like <laughs> – it's. I felt like that when I talked to Tyrone Tracy at the Combine last year. It's like I've been watching him for months, and I'm just begging for the world to realize that you're a player. And then you get to sit down, and most of these guys just have incredible energy. The running backs, the energy is so, yeah. so different. And I feel like Manunga is kind of that guy. There's a lot of dense running backs this year, too, man. Like You mentioned a couple of them. Like, like Ashton Genty we had in the preseason was like 5'8 and a quarter and like 217 pounds. And you just mentioned Manunga, who was like 210 of just pure muscle, which is yeah, just 5'9, 210. Like, yeah. Do you realize how big 210 is at 5'9? <laughs> it's huge. That's insane. It's huge. That's thick. I, and I mean, we're not even talking about like Damian Martinez holding around 241 pounds. Mm. It's no, just no, it's stupid wild. running back class. Well, and it's such a fun running back class, too, Connor, because there's so many good ones at the top like you mentioned Ashton Jean T you just mentioned Martinez I mean Jay Knott is a guy that I like a ton out of Cal yeah, Ali Gordon's plays. a player you know I, there's so many good ones I guess my question is you already mentioned Jean T is your run R- R- RB2 who is your top guy right now who do you see as that top guy coming out of summer Judkins I mean yeah. you look at the amount of carries this guy got, I'm kind of glad he got out of Ole Miss uh, like selfishly for his own body. You know, now he's going to split the workload a little bit at Ohio state with Travion Henderson. I mean, the way this dude runs through players, you're talking about back-to-back seasons of 76, 78 missed tackles force. He's jacked from head to toe. He kind of fits the, the mold of this class, like just muscle on muscle. The way he run, he had 871 yards after contact last year. I mean, not all carries are built the same. He got teams were really piling on him and he was able to run through contact. I saw there was Ole Miss ran this toss play a lot and he has outside burst on that play for his size where it's like, okay, I think he's a really scheme diverse runner where if I want to be a gap team, I want to run downhill and then I want to kind of throw an outside zone play at you. I think he could do it. And that was what I loved about Brees Hall. Brees Hall coming out of Iowa State. You watch him in outside zone and he had a feel and burst that was special. And then you watch him just run downhill through the A gap and he could lower his pads and run right through you. Okay. Like that's that's a complete running back. Those are the guys that matter in this league the, the most where it's all every scheme, all three downs. Um, here's the thing with Judkins too. quietly. He's got 73 snaps at Ole Miss in the slot or out wide. I mean, and they should have done it more when you watch the plays. They should have used them out even more as a, a, a pass guy. And that workload was insane. The amount of carries he's had over the last two years. He doesn't fumble. He just doesn't fumble. It, yeah. It's you got to like he, he kick, takes care of the football. I man, it, he's just he's a different kind of cat. He really is. So when you're looking at like that dude walking into a room and saying, OK, give me the ball 25 times today and, and we're going to find a way to win. Judkins looks like that guy. Is there a running One, back on the other side? Sorry, Joe. Is there another a running back on the other side that you have seen a lot of hype for? And not necessarily that you're low on them, but you don't quite see it to the highest of levels of the other players do. So maybe that's one that Judkins you're lower on the consensus. That is Judkins for me, but that's the conversation for a different day. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a player like that for you? Donovan Edwards, does that count? Yeah, it counts. Yeah. I think people, re- yeah. and I get it, right? Here's the thing with Edwards, it felt like last summer, not this summer. We had just come off the draft with Jameer Gibbs, and everybody was like, is this going to be the new running back that's more of an offensive weapon valued in round one now. And I think people looked at Edwards playing alongside Blake Corman said he could be that. And I get it. Like I really do. I, I don't know if it's that special breakaway speed, big playability. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, and I understand you can't control your usage all the time, but it feels like he should impact the game even more with the skill set he has. And we Great. haven't seen him take over in that way yet it, as both a runner and a pass catcher has been, you know, in 2022 looked a lot better to me. I mean, he had almost a thousand yards. He looked, he was just insanely explosive. 
I just don't know if he's a traditional running back where like, is that guy a top 50 pick? I, I don't know. And we're going to see how he's used this year. But I thought once upon a time, it felt like a lot of people thought Edwards was a lock to be a top 50 pick. And in this running back class, he, he kind of he gets lost a little bit at times, especially when you watch Amari and Hampton and Jaden Knott and Travion Henderson, and the big speed that they have. Can I throw my comp out there on him and, yeah. see, and hear your reaction? So think again, departmentalized weapon projection towards a running back on the next level. Six one two ten. Kenyon Drake was the guy that I looked at with a Donovan Edwards. I, and I felt like you kind of saw that with Drake in the NFL. Like there was oh, moments, yeah. right? But he bounced around. Was, yeah. yeah. But then there was uh, other yeah. parts of it where they're like, I don't know if they, I want that guy to be my running back every day, though. Like there's, you know, that's just kind of that, that hit or miss with him a little bit. Uh, absolutely, Ryan. And number one, let's just let's just take a moment to applaud you for body typing correctly with comps. <laughs> <laughs> if I have a pet peeve in this world and I'm not somebody that yells on Twitter and calls like, but man, like we, we as a society, if somebody is six, three, two forty, like the comp can't be six feet, two fifteen. Well, 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 jo- well, Joe, comp and some guy to uh, Derek, Derek Henry. So I guess we're, uh, we're oh, all no, 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 my God, I, you, you applauded my comp. Play, I said style Kyron comps, Williams. play style comps can be different, but if we're calling a player yeah. comparison flat outright, Yep. Yeah, the body type. I, Kenyon Drake, yeah, he's same build as Edwards. You're right. Yeah. It's just you always – you love the flashes, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's uh, – yeah. Like, is he going to be Camara? Like, let's, let's you know, let's settle down. <laughs> Taking us back broad here, um, one position group. I, I feel like you ask a lot of people this question and it changes. Which position group do you think is the surefire, strongest, sits above the rest? Ooh, well, as I said, I'm not all I'm not through defense yet, so I'm curious if this changes. Okay. I do like running back a lot. Wide receiver depth looks really, really good as it often does. I have a feel like the D line could take this away, but I'm not done yet. I've watched Mason Graham, Deion Walker, Tyleek Williams, Kenneth Grant, Riley Mills, and Howard Cross. So I have a lot of work left to do on the D line because I know there's a lot of it's big a, names. It's a pretty good start, to. though. It's a pretty good start. I was going to say that's yeah. enough to that might be enough to answer that question. <laughs> I mean, stupid good. I kind of want to say D line because I, I think Mason Graham was dropped here from another planet, mm-hmm. but uh, and Deion Walker, like just is, when you walk, you see him on walk around on the field. So, um, and that's not even getting into how good Kenneth Grant is and and these other guys so it'll probably be D-line but since I've finished offense I feel like broad broadly (sighs) the wide receiver group I'm curious how it plays out and why I say that is it has the chance to be and I think burden is phenomenal and I think McMillan moves differently from a big guy that you you like a lot of that where a lot of people like Drake London because of that and I'm high on Isaiah Bond because I just think if you can move and fly like that and catch the ball and track the ball, like you're going to be an impact player in the right offense. Then I have the questions of is Travis Hunter going to take the next step as a wide receiver? And is he going to, I don't like saying commit to that because he's trying to do the best for his team. Right. But my opinion is the best version of Travis Hunter as an NFL prospect is playing wide receiver mm. all the time. Interesting. Okay. I, I think corner is more valuable, but I think he's a better playmaker. I, like it's, it is really weird, right? Because, mm-hmm. and I can't believe I'm turning this into a Travis Hunter conversation. If I love he it. Develop, do it. Please well, do it. I was de- about to ask this anyway. So if he develops as a corner, because that's harder to find, in my opinion, yeah. that's the right road. But I don't think he's, I think he's a better wide receiver than a corner right now. I don't even know if it's really very close. So, uh, and Emeka Abuka, I think, is going to have a big bounce back year. The refinement and the athlete he is, he should be fine. Curious to see how the Oregon guys do. We know they can fly. There's just so many damn wide receivers. Like Jalen Royals on Utah State. He I is just watched good. him. Just watched him, yeah, dude. So good. Such a good player. He, I, I had him as in this class. I For that specific show, we ranked 20 wide receivers. We don't do that for summer scouting for every position group. That's just insane. <laughs> uh, I had him as wide receiver nine. Over names that wow. people over names that people know, like Tez Johnson and Trey Harris and, I, you know, so Restrepo. I, I, I've watched 13 so far, and he would be a top eight receiver for me right now. So I think we're in a similar boat with Jalen Royals, it seems. Yeah, he he does some Devonte Smith things where I'm like, I'm like, damn, like you just he's so smooth. He's elite at finding the football. He understands body control. I don't his road to being a star is just insane. I'm like, what happened here? This guy's one of the best wide receivers in college football. So 
it feels like wide receiver can get there as it often is. But uh, yeah, if I had to say a group like definitively coming out of summer, it's looking like D line's going to shake up that way. I'll say the nicest surprise was guard, though. I, I was pleasantly yeah. Yeah. I was pleasantly surprised with the amount of guards in this group. All right. Well, Joe, any other questions? That's good. No, I think that's uh, I think that's all we had. Connor, we appreciate you taking the time today to to join us. You can find Connor on Twitter at Connor J Rogers. Anything you else you want to plug? Anything you got coming out? Next? What's the next position group? D line. Uh, okay. We probably we took, could have guessed that. <laughs> yeah, we had we had one break in the season, so we used it in between offense and defense, and we did the EA College Football Player Ratings episode. If you want to listen to all our position groups, though, NFL Stock Exchange, mm-hmm. we went through quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, offensive tackle. We did interior offensive line together. Next will be D-line, which I, I, I just feel like it's never going to stop. Every time I think I'm getting close, like I'm like, this is going to be like 22, so many. 22 players to watch. And I don't know how you guys feel, but when you finish a position group for an episode and then the comments are like, but what about this guy? You're just like, damn, <laughs> like it's uh, just, we, there's only we, so much time in the day. We, we just had a random one the other day. I, I, they li- literally commented some guy. I was like, I have no idea who that is, sir. I'm sorry. Like, I literally have never heard of this player before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, there's God. there's a lot of those, too, where it's, you know, it's like, hey, if he pops this season, we'll get there. Um, so, yeah, no, it's it's great talking to you guys. Obviously, you guys are doing such a good job. It's, it's good to know there's other sickos out there that are spending their summers <laughs> the same way. It makes me feel a little less, you know, ill in the brain. <laughs> Before we get out of here, Xbox or PS5? Me, me, and Brian have been debating this for for a month now. PS5 for me. Yes. Um, yes. yes. Now it's it's been a windy road. Uh, I mm-hmm. I was a PlayStation guy as a kid, so I had PS1. Then no, I didn't have PS1. My first console away from like Super Nintendo was PS2. I want to say, and then I moved to Xbox 360. And that was the red ring of death. Era. Yeah. So when that died, uh, I eventually got a PS. I went back to PlayStation. I haven't gone back since. So yeah, now it's weird. I don't I don't know it's if one is definitively better. Oh, it is. But, See, that's the right yeah. answer. That's the right answer. Ryan doesn't even know what he's talking about. He has, my, he's got like an Xbox, uh, uh, the, the original Xbox. That's all he's got. He doesn't even have a console. He's borrowing one. He's giving me shit for having an Xbox. <laughs> The, so this will make you guys laugh. My wife has an Xbox and sometimes not not laugh because it's like, oh, it's a woman yeah. playing video games. Like, that's stupid. We're clipping we're clip like, right now. We're but it's, right it's, now. Yeah. it's funny that like our ha- we have like technically a divided household, but like right. she doesn't she doesn't care at all. Like we just wanted like when she wanted to get a system, I was like, let's get a different. Let's not get another PS5. It would be an absolute waste. Is she playing I, Dynasty mode? She's not. She's not rebuilding North Texas as we speak. Uh, she literally plays like Hogwarts. That's Uh-oh. that's pretty much the extent of it. Um, Fall Guys, you know, that that kind of that kind of run. Yeah, she's not my- up all night recruiting three stars to come to <laughs> Texas State like me. My so. my girlfriend texted me yesterday. She was passing a a GameStop, and I, I honestly would believe her if she did. She actually was like, "Should I get this so I can play the game with you?" I'm like, "Don't you don't you don't want to." <laughs> cross that path you don't no. want to dive into what i'm going to be doing for the next month it's not trevor called it a gateway really drug thing. and i it's it really it's it is it's least productive really week of my life easily it's bad <laughs> i keep gravitating like the gaming monitors next to me and i'm just i like <laughs> i need to put it in a different room it is not it's, it's amazing that it's back i mean we've waited a, i stopped playing madden for a long time like a long long i just just didn't mm-hmm. do it for me anymore so the fact we have ea cfb back is uh it's a nice change Well, we'll get you out of here, Connor. Thanks again. And folks, we'll catch up with you soon.